Before the break, Senator Van Hollen and I, we spoke about the stimulus bill and how desperately needed it is as we speak. Now, another big part of the debate in D.C., it involves the minimum wage and whether or not to hike it to $15 an hour. Let's get to another aspect and how much you believe also politically capital should be spent on this, and that is raising the minimum wage. Um, and again, let's use your state of Maryland as an, as an example. I believe the minimum wage there is $10.10 .10 an hour. What would the material difference be if it got hiked, staggered, albeit over a few years, to eventually get to $15 an hour for both the recipient, but also the argument is, can businesses afford to pay that rate? So this makes a huge difference, of course, uh, to recipients. If you look at the current federal minimum wage at $7.25 an hour, it, you can work full time, right? 40 hours a week uh, and still be below the federal poverty level. Uh, it's just unconscionable for the country to set our federal minimum wage at a place where we know someone will have to live in poverty, even if they work full time. Now, the good news is Maryland, because of the Maryland legislature, uh, we are in the process of phasing up our minimum wage to the $15 an hour in the year 2025. So the Maryland law coincides with what we hope will be this new uh, national law. I, we're going to push very hard uh, because, uh, again, you have these corporations, uh, you know, like, like Walmart, uh, that took the benefits of that tax cut. Uh, gave great, you know, stock buybacks, uh, but uh, their workers are not, you know, getting uh, anywhere close right now to that $15 uh, minimum wage. In fact, we just had a testimony from a, a Maryland uh, employee uh, at Walmart today um, in the budget uh, committee um, talking about the stresses on her life and how hard it was to make ends meet um, at her current wage. Um, again, the good news is in Maryland, we're going to, the state, uh, embarked on raising that to $15. We need to do the same thing at the federal level. And, and to that magic number, uh, the 50 and then the vice president being the 51st, uh, as it's an open secret here, you have Senators Manchin and Cinema who've got reservations about it. How do you, going into this process, um, there's been debate. Maybe Democrats say, no, wait a second. The public's on our side. Let's not try and negotiate against ourselves. Let's hold until it's impossible. Or... Is the perfect the enemy of the good and is somewhere in the middle an acceptable number? How do you go into the process the, seeing the strategy? Because you're not going to get two bites at the apple to, to try and change this minimum wage number. Well, we're going to be pushing for what, you know, workers themselves tell us is absolutely uh, necessary uh, to make ends meet. And that is why we've had the, you know, the fight for uh, 15. Uh, we're going to keep pushing. Um, and, you know, it's important that it is important people hear from their constituents uh, back home, regardless of what state uh, that they're from. And then it comes down to mobilizing to get uh, the votes um, or any negotiations uh, that follow. Finally, Senator, I'll bring it full circle. You said at the top, you got to go big here, uh, given what every economist says. Uh, you know, on the other side of the aisle, they're saying uh, too much, uh, too much debt you're going to rack up here. And there's waste. There's a bridge from New York to Canada. There's repairing the BART system in San Francisco. Um, is this laden with unnecessary expenses? Uh, do you need to go back with a scalpel uh, to chop out? Or is it good the way it is, assuming, as we expect, it's going to come to you guys sooner than later when it gets through the House? So uh, these are, you know, my same Republican colleagues uh, who in December 2017 uh, voted to add $2 trillion uh, to the deficit, not to give working people uh, a raise, uh, but to give big corporations uh, a, a huge windfall. Uh, these are the same claims that were made back in 2008, 2009, when we passed the American uh, Recovery Act uh, to help lift uh, the country uh, out of that very deep uh, recession. Uh, Republicans um, in the Senate first bargained down the overall price, and then not a single Republican in the House of Representatives at the time voted for a bill to provide the country with desperately needed relief. Then Republicans complained that uh, it didn't provide enough of a, a boost to the economy. Um, and we know that uh, the current president, uh, Joe Biden, at that time was the person overseeing 
uh, the accountability of the spending of that American recovery money. And it was spent well, uh, and it was spent with accountability. Uh, that will be true in this case as well. Uh, I will say, you know, it, this is obviously a huge amount of public investment. Uh, so it's going to be essential that we, we track uh, the funds. Uh, but uh, look, the, the, the risks of doing nothing or little here far outweigh the risks um, that not, not, you know, of, of, of going forward as uh, been proposed. I couldn't agree more. Senator Van Holland, I always say over time we talk, you have a big week ahead of you, nothing different next week. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Good to be with you. Thanks. Up next, she's back. Marjorie Taylor Greene striking again. The Georgia Congresswoman tries to scuttle a bill that would end discrimination for people based on their sexual preference. She's managing to insult many of her colleagues in the process. Shocking.